<laughs> there. Okay. Everybody's been alerted. We are yeah. recording now. <laughs> Not just monkeying around with Zoom and Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us, everyone. And we're so glad to have Caitlin Wiseman. Did I pronounce that right, Caitlin? It's actually Wiesman. Wiesman. Okay, yeah. great. Good to know yeah. that. Of the Texas Forestry Museum. Um, I discovered the Texas Forestry Museum because I was doing research. That's one of the things I do a lot of for Atlanta grade school friends. And I found there's a database back there and there's like Cass County. Mm -hmm. And so I pointed it out to Danny Stanley, our treasurer and his wife, Lee Stanley. And um, they were like, hey, I think there's missing some stuff in there. So I reached out to Caitlin, I said, First, we just need to know about the Texas Forestry Museum, but also we wanted to connect because I think we probably have some forestry history, um, the forest industry and the like uh, in the greater Atlanta area and Cass County that you may not have. And so maybe we can supply some of that because, boy, did I get an earful. Well, they don't have this down and that down. and <laughs> yeah, But it's a great database. Everybody get on the Texas Forestry Museum website and check that out because it's really cool. And um, we need to, you know, connect that. It's such a huge part of uh, um, the area and the economy and the ecology and the like. Yeah. So anyway, but Caitlin, you introduce yourself and tell us what you would like to tell us about the Texas Forestry Museum because we don't know anything. Okay. Um, I'll just start with, my name is Caitlin Wiesman. I'm the education coordinator at the Texas Forestry Museum. I've been here for over 10 years now. Um, I started in August of 2013, and so um, I'm making my round to my 11th year, but uh, how I started was as the education coordinator. So I've been in this position itself for 10 years, which is wonderful um, because it's where I've um, kind of gotten to see the process of where the museum had started um, when I was here and then how we've kind of moved it forward and progressed, um, whether it be exhibits or even our educational programming with outreach and other things. Um, so the Texas Forestry Museum, it talks a lot about the history of the sawmill industry and economy during that time period of the late 1800s, around the 1880s to about 1930s. Um, there is a permanent exhibit that is devoted to the sawmill industry inside the museum. And then we also have another permanent exhibit that talks a little bit about the paper mill that was located here in Lufkin that was Southland Paper. Um, and it discusses the history of that paper mill as well as different forest products. Um, and so we also have a wonderful train exhibit outside. We're really lucky to have a locomotive that was owned by the W.T. Carter Brother Company. And so that's outside with a depot from Camden. Um, and so we do have exhibits that feature the history of the area and East Texas with the sawmill history. But we also have a lot of interactive exhibits that kind of discuss and um, allow people, we say children and fun adults who want to do things that like hands-on um, things throughout the whole museum. So uh, currently we have a lot of people who do come for the history, but we do have a lot of just regulars who come to bring their children to have some kind of a play day or just some time to kind of explore and get their motor skills um, kind of developed. So we have a lot of moms, especially during the day that bring their toddlers, um, but then we get a lot of school groups. So uh, it's one of those, well, uh, a lot of rounded things of happening. Uh, we also have a trail outside. So we have a lot of different things um, to kind of bring people from the area, but also from outside the area um, to come visit and see. And like you said, we do have a website and it does have our um, sawmill database and our railroad and tram database on that as well. So um, that was created before I came here by um, the group that was here before us. And so it's been one of those things that yes, we have people who have contacted us to say, hey, it's actually doesn't have this. And we're always looking and wanting more information from other people. Um, and so we still get donations from people that have objects, but then also photographs and stuff. And then we also just love like talking to people about the history and what they know about different areas. So. 
Are you all connected at all to the Portal of Texas History at University of North Texas? Have you ever connected there? We are not. Um, we are a nonprofit, a 501c3. And so um, we're actually not affiliated with any other group. Um, and so we did how the museum started in 1976 is when they broke ground at the museum and started building it. And we've had other additions added on to in later years. But um, the Texas Forestry Association in the 1950s saw a change in the industry itself where it was different te uh, technology and machinery was being developed and they knew that they needed to start preserving some of the historical um, things that machines that they were using or even tools. And so they started collecting items in the 1950s. And then um, the Lufkin Kiwanis played a role as well with the Texas Forestry Association and gaining enough funding to then open the museum and breaking ground in 1976 for it. That's really great. The portal to Texas history is just, you know, like I've been on there searching for newspapers from Cass County through the centuries. I'm, I'm continually looking for 1936 documentation of our school, Atlanta Miller Grade School or Miller Grade as it was called. And um, there, there's not much in there. It's yeah. tough, but it is a great database you know, and it does have a little bit more just about Cass County generally, but Atlanta, mm -hmm. Texas, it doesn't have too much. And I, um, through the creation of our newsletters, I don't know if you've seen any of those, but we have a monthly newsletter. We started um, uh, January of 2022, so two years going on every month, and we're sharing stories. We're kind of using it as our oral history yeah. review because uh, Jane Cook Barnhill tried to get um, an oral history program going for Atlanta Miller grade school, because there were so many wonderful stories and people wanted to talk about it. And mm -hmm. it didn't, it just was too hard. It, it was really hard to get somebody trained to go all the way up to Atlanta and to yeah. do that. So we discovered kind of by accident, we just thought, well, we need to communicate. So we're on MailChimp, but now we're telling the stories of people who went there or had experiences there. And, um, that MailChimp newsletter, we're providing links to all the prior issues because it's really building a um, database in a way of the mm -hmm. history of the school. So that's really it's awesome. been fun. But I tell everybody on the board that uh, one thing it would be great if we, um, there's so many great photos if you get on our Facebook page where we're live streaming today, that mm -hmm. um, there's so many great photos that people have uploaded. It's so great. And uh, if they could, um, maybe if they, the people who own the originals could scan them a bit higher quality mm -hmm. and we could create an archive both for our local Atlanta public library, but also up into the portal uh, of Texas up there at yeah. University of North Texas, which is collecting this kind of stuff. And we could have our own little archive so that it really helps the legacy of the school stay alive in people's mind. So, um, so yeah. that's why I say, I think your uh, sawmill database, and I love that railroad. I was like, look at who owned what railroad yeah. transport vehicles, you know, for the lumber industry. That's so fascinating on there. So um, I just was saying maybe connecting them with University of North Texas would give the whole thing thing your project a lot more visibility if people can get on there and search too yeah and just connect to your database i don't know how okay. they do that. there are some uh grants i have seen uh recently online for uh you know collecting rural histories and um mm -hmm. that type of thing and so that would be worth yeah. doing i you yeah. know just because it's nice to see them all on facebook and that's become um that is, uh, that has become, you know, uh, a great, you know, resource. But hey, Danny, this is Danny Stanley is our treasurer of our board. Hey, how are you doing? Hi. Oh, you're muted. Unmute yourself. <laughs> there we go. Is that better? Yes. yes. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I just saw the update and I've been, uh, Lee, my wife is, uh, Got a bad, a hurt back, and I've been kind of tending to her, and I just saw the update, so I apologize to you oh, all. Oh, you're fine. That's okay. Uh, Caitlin, yeah. 
Weisman was sharing the history and how in the 50s, um, the lumber industry started realizing that they had a lot of historical equipment and information. And it was, yeah. the, it was the industry was modernizing incredibly fast by then. Yeah. And so uh, that, that's when the Forestry Museum concept kind of started, but it opened in the 70s, I guess. They broke ground in the 70s, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Yeah, great. Right. And I mentioned Lee is one of the people who has some forestry history in her family and how we um, would love to connect to the um, forestry database at the Forestry Museum in some fashion. Yeah. Right, well. and... Uh... I uh, actually it was a big part of her history. Her granddad actually was uh, killed in a in the at the White Walker uh, uh -huh. salt mill years ago. Uh -huh. We got caught up in the the machinery, uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. that was located in Bivens, Texas, just about six miles south of Atlanta. And okay. uh, so, uh, it, it was a, a fairly large mill, so far as I know, and uh, was really uh, impactful in the area way back at the time. So yeah. there you go. And yeah. I was uh, mentioning to Caitlin, Danny, that um, that it would be nice if we could all connect our histories, our Facebook photos that are so great and her all her database, which is huge now, and uh, with the University of North Texas, which has the portal to Texas history. And mm, that's, yeah. I've been on there a lot searching. There have a lot of maps on there. Cass County, not much about Atlanta, Texas, but there are some old newspapers go decades, 100 years ago. And so I was just trying to put us in the mainstream there as we're building um, more knowledge and interest in East Texas and all of that. So. Well, I can, if anybody can do it, you can, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn is a driving force in what we do, for sure. Absolutely. I'm a historian, and so mm. just look out. I'm like researching every day. It's like, hey, I wake up in the middle of the night and go, what, what do you think about this? <laughs> I'll get on there and be searching like, oh, I'll look at that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So there's just a lot of great history about the Atlanta area. And so we mm -hmm. are trying to capture that. But we wanted to connect with Caitlin and with the Texas Forestry Museum. So we, maybe there's a partnership here. Maybe. Well, sure. Yeah, that sounds good. We need to have I, Caitlin come visit and uh, tour the school and maybe just sit down and have lunch and talk about with some of the people with more likely who have forestry mm -hmm. in their blood, literally. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, I, I, I think, you know, we have plans to include a museum space in our building. And, and since the logging industry and still is very prevalent in our area, very prevalent. And uh, but uh, since it's had such a great impact on our area, it'd be nice to include a, a, a spot about that. So I think it'd be very interesting. So are you local? Are you in Denton? Is that where you are? I heard the word North Texas. I'm actually I'm located in Lufkin, Texas. So, OK, um, uh, yeah, still East Texas, but a little bit south. <laughs> Oh, I'm very familiar with where Lufkin is. We we have grandkids in Houston, so we're on highway. We're on Highway 59 as well. Yes. Atlanta. Is. So we we get we head down that you way. You have to just go down 59 to hit us. That's right. It's a Houston. That's right. Yeah. Years okay. ago, uh, I'm dating myself now, but um, I worked with Buddy Temple on mm -hmm. some wildlife conservation uh, projects, and. He was the most fun person on our board to work with. I mean, just he had such great attitude. Mm -hmm. And I was um, getting ready to, I was supporting, of course, doing research as usual, but supporting the uh, run up to the 150th anniversary of the King Ranch, South Texas. Ooh. So I got online. Now here's, I have a history degree. Art history is my focus. So they all go, ooh, art. Eh. So I decide I'm going to look at the farmer's almanac back 150 years ago in South Texas. So I go to the library. Nobody, nobody ever looks at those. So I get in there and I find all this original data about the exact number of quail harvested, harvested uh, deer and everything. So I'm sharing this with Buddy Temple. And he said, you know, my dad had this vision 
that he would, at every railroad stop, he would have a lumber store. At every little city on the railway, he'd have a temple lumber store there. Mm -hmm. He was, yeah. looked at thought of it statewide. And um, one thing that I liked, actually, was that, uh, your, back to your talk, Caitlin, about machinery, was Buddy loved the big machines. Man, he loved them. Yeah. He would talk about those, and yeah, I got to ride this one. It was really cool. Of course, his whole yeah. family was East Texas, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the mother load. Is it still international paper today? Is that what it temple no it's, it's it's graphic packaging is up here at domino which is north of us about uh 10 to 12 miles oh. and, uh, uh international paper sold out to them oh i'll say five years ago oh, and then, okay. we have, then we have dom tar in ashdown arkansas which is only about uh, 45 minutes north of us that's a paper mill as well okay uh, I, I was going to say something that's that's kind of shifting just a little bit, but uh, I mentioned one other sawmill that had some significant history. Here's Grogan Sawmill, right. and it was located between Atlanta and Bivens, about six miles south of us. But they had a uh, community store, which they used their own script to sell items uh, for, and they had a light rail that went through the wood from the sawmill to a little community that they built for the folks that worked at the, at the sawmill. And we, I used to deer hunt right where that light well went through. And then you can still see the big ruts in the, in the ground where those rails went. It's just a neat, neat area you know, over there. So uh, there's a lot of history about saw, sawmilling over here. Yes, there's definitely a lot um, just in East Texas about like how that industry was the majority of the industries for a certain time and a specific time due to the railroad. So mm -hmm. having a light rail go through definitely probably helped get transportation of the goods to those community members. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a very close tie between the railroads and the lumber industry. Yeah. Sure. It had to have both of them. Same with cattle, of course. Yeah. Know. Fort Worth to San Antonio to South Texas. You know, that was a huge yeah. route there. So. My, my dad, who's 94, um, talks of a time years and years ago when he was a child where there, there was not much timber in the area. And it was it was after he was a young child when they, the, really the, the big timber growth started in the area. So we're, you're looking at about a period of 100 years is, is mm -hmm. what you're looking at. So... Uh, um, it's 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 been a uh, a saving grace for our area. Let's see here. Uh, Gary's asked yeah. a question. Can you see the question? Yes, he says. Do you have maps of the light railroad? They can be found out on the landscape. I oh. do. I think there there is there are some railroad uh, documents in the Texas Forestry Museum database. By the way, Caitlin, what? It kind of depends. So um, how our collection develops usually is by donations of people or organizations. So we do have quite a few artifacts from different um, sawmill towns or sawmill companies due to the fact that they did donate them. So it's kind of, this sounds horrible, a hit or a miss. So um, we usually, if someone requests specifics, um, the better or more specific you can be about what town or what um, sawmill company it was, then we can actually look those things up and see if we have anything related to them. We do, we recently had someone donate um, their timber uh, maps for, um, it used to be for the district forester of Russ County, and he would do for Nacogdoches County, Cherokee, who, where he was for that region, the district forester, and it's a ledger full of his um, timber stand maps. So then um, what he basically had to check on and make sure was still appropriate um, and being used how it needed to be used. So um, it kind of depends on our map collection. Um, we do have maps. Uh, it's just, like I said, it's a hit or miss sometimes. Well, it's all good, but that's a good message to share with these communities like Atlanta, that if they have family documents about the mm -hmm. industry in that area to consider a donation to the archives. Yes. They need to live um, on with people yeah. who are, you know, looking for the information specifically and people who mm -hmm. 
research it and write about it and bring it back to life. Yeah, that's, I didn't mention it, but um, so the building I'm currently in, in is not the museum. It's actually our office, but it's also called the Education Research Center because we have a library that is um, inside that has a lot of different books that relate to sawmill history, but also forestry or um, topics that are on nature or things that relate to forestry and taxes. And then um, a lot of our archives, those are actually in this building um, that houses my office and as well as the director's office and so we do have a lot of photographs a lot of different documents um, and when people are doing research they're more than welcome to email us or contact us to see if there's an available time to come in um, usually we enjoy if they give us a heads up of kind of what they want to look for because then we can actually do like a preliminary search for them um, mm -hmm. we have something called FileMaker pro where we have it all of our items are accessioned and then they're logged into this database that we can then look and go through it. Um, and so it's just computerized format of like all the files that we have in file cabinets. Um, we also have another thing called a hanging file system. And so those documents that are in the hanging files are slightly different. It is a lot of information that was researched to make and develop our sawmill um, database that's online and also the railroad and tram databases. But it also has different documents that could be photocopies of historical photographs. So it's not a primary source necessarily, but it's more of a secondary source as a photocopy of something. So we have a lot of newspaper articles and we do have them um, by county. And then sometimes um, if we had people donate or um, give us photocopies of things, it could also be a specific sawmill um, company itself. Um, that people can then look through and research. So we do get a, um, a few requests that they'll come in person and we'll get the files ready for them and then we'll set them out for them so that they're able to view them and stuff. So um, once again, that's one of those things that's like a hit or miss if someone's um, donated it to us or if they've given it to us or given us permission to photocopy it, then um, we have that type of information, but you're right. It really depends on who's willing to um, donate their items or give us permission to have a photocopy of it. Um, it's not where we're acquiring it from usually other locations. It's usually um, donations from families and things. Right. Did, did, you, did you say those photos are on uh, online? I mean, can you view them, uh, freely view them or are they restricted? Right. We do not have them online. Um, we, when I was here, probably when I was about five years in, we did digitize all the photos that we had currently at that time. We have gained more at this point. Um, so they're just kind of like a little uh, misnote. We have three full-time staff. Um, there's the director, there's my position, which is the education coordinator, and then we have the museum coordinator. Um, all of us do work um, primarily all together on all the projects and stuff, but we don't have someone who's just designated as collections. Mm -hmm. So um, we were able to digitize the photographs at that point. We have had more photographs come in um, that we haven't been able to digitize, but yes, we do not have anything that you could look online. You would have to come in person to be able to view the photos themselves. And, and are you Texas specific? Or we are Texas specific. So, um, Anything that relates um, to different sawmills and things, it's where our mission is that it's Texas related forestry. We're in a, and, and of course you're close to the state line too, but mm -hmm. we're, we're in an area right next to Arkansas and Louisiana. And yeah. uh, uh, we had a significant population growth uh, from Rhodesa, Louisiana back at the, uh, well, whenever it was turn of the century, I guess, because of a, of a devastating tornado. And, and I was just wondering about, just curious about the rails coming through there and, and the logging across state lines, just, just curious. Yeah, um, sometimes it kind of, we do try to stay to that, um, I guess that mission statement that it is related to Texas forestry. Um, we do have a lot of items. There's certain things that we have that have no provenance. Uh, we don't know where it came from. Um, we may have like where who donated it, but there's no story along the lines. Mm -hmm. So um, 
our archives have gotten to a point, we have over 30,000 um, different things. Yeah. So when you come to the mm -hmm. museum, you're only seeing a very small portion of what we have in the storerooms and archives that we have. Um, but when we're accepting donations, we are trying to make sure that it has a story along with it. It has something relatable um, to the forest industry and then also its uniqueness. Um, there's certain things like we have a ton of um, chainsaws, we have a ton of crosscut saws and it's wonderful. We love having them, but we need when someone brings an object in, it's uh, we're now looking if they're bringing it, that it actually has a story that's relatable. Like we know who used it. So when we display it, we can actually tell that story alongside yeah. it versus just being like, this is a crosscut saw. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, let me ask you this, mm -hmm. Carolyn, I'm, am I covering up what you need to do? But I've got these questions that, that come to mind. Um, is it possible? It, it, I'm just going to throw this date out. It looks like about three years down the road, our, our school project is going to could very well be complete. Uh, things are we're just about at a jumping off point to where we're going to be able to probably secure the, the fund with certainly with Carolyn's help and, and get it done. And mm -hmm. it's about a 12,000 square foot building and lots of classrooms in it. Is it possible to have a sort of a traveling museum where we, where, where you guys might could uh, uh, put together something for us to display for our X amount of time and, and mm -hmm. advertise that just, just to uh, promote our building or promote what you, you all are doing as well? Is that a possibility? That is definitely a possibility. We loan out items to um, different organizations. So the Bullock Museum um, down in Austin, they sure. have some of our items. Even um, weirdly enough, but funny to me, I love it because obviously going down 59, I grew up in Victoria. So that's where my parents are still located. And um, Livingston, they have the rest stop areas. They have several items in their little cases. It's just a small display case, but some of them are from our museum. So we do loan out objects. Um, and so that would not be something that would be out of the possibility to loan objects. Yeah. So that you could develop an exhibit that features or talks about sawmill history. And we could definitely help with that if that's something yeah. that we're looking forward to doing. Wonderful, and and I know the rest stop well, so it gives me some connection with the rest stop. Yes, I was like, I stop there all the time. So, uh, but yeah, interesting. You know, you yeah. need a you uh, need to have somebody come in and uh, create an endowed position for research, forest industry research, and a curator. You know, to kind of do all that and. Mm. So we need more people to do master's theses and uh, PhD yeah. work and uh, get that great history out to the public. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, and I see Gary is, agrees with that. He said, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary, Inslee, Gary Inslee, who for some reason his picture's not up there either, but he, he is tiny. He's tiny. He's a, he, <laughs> He, he works in historical preservation and education as well. And he's pretty much located in Jefferson and all of its rich history. And, and uh, he's immersed in it quite deeply. So he's, he's an asset for us, truly is. Well, good. Yeah. Does Atlanta Independent School District ever uh, bring field trips over to the museum? Have they ever done that? I wonder if they might like to. You have such great children's programming. I've been watching it for weeks now. <laughs> I was like, um, I off of the top of my head, I want to say probably not, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. We usually, um, especially this fall, we've gotten more tours. Um, there was a little bit of a lull in 2021 because um, schools were still hesitant to be able to get back into the tour um, schedule, but. Um, it's definitely picked up this year. Um, we were talking about it, the director and myself, the museum, we've had um, over 40% increased visitors. Um, now that's not just tours, that's more um, saying people that coming through our door, but we've been increasing the amount of people we've been um, visiting with, whether they're coming to us or I'm going out to schools. Um, and so that's always a possibility. Uh, for them to come, we would love to have a tour group from Atlanta. I know, I don't know how far, like time wise, is Atlanta from? It's uh, two hours and 20 minutes, actually. Okay. To, 
to Lufkin. So it, it would take a, it would be an all day event. And, I, and yeah. sometimes, you know, that that's a little much for school district. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, that, yeah. it's something that could be uh, explored. Do you all have a, a propaganda brochures and those types of things? <laughs> we do. We do. Um, I can always send that to y'all. Sure. Um, I have stuff that's like it. How we do tours is we call it a tour menu. So usually depending on how many students depends on how many activities we do. And, um, and so usually if like a school has a hundred students that they're bringing, we'll split them up into five groups and we'll rotate them through five stations where they do a different activity at each station. And that takes um, about 20 minutes each activity. So we estimate that's probably going to be about two hours, just give or take. If anybody arrives late, we need a restroom stop or that kind of thing. Um, so we just rotate them and we have over 20 different things that we can do with them, whether that be a tour of the sawmill um, history wing where we talk about the history or whether we're playing something like wildlife bingo where they're learning about East Texas <laughs> animals, mm -hmm. um, fun facts about them. And then also we have um, different things like we have an outdoor where we can go on a hike where we talk about different hiking safety rules and things and what you should take on a hike with you when you go um just all different types of things that can get them outside or be inside kind of fluctuates but we have tons of different activities we do with kids yeah i i can my daughter uh is involved with uh, uh what what is uh, in, advanced students a little bit yeah the ad advanced students and uh and so they do special tours sometimes yeah. so I, I would really like to have some uh, information about that okay yeah i can That'd definitely um send it to y'all i don't know um if i have your personal email but i can always send it to carolyn if she doesn't mind and she can always forward it on that, that'd be great that'd be okay. great yeah I'll definitely also if you do want to come sometime to visit atlanta we tour the school danny is doesn't live very far from there he could do that but also that might be a tie-in you could visit with the atlanta independent school district and just let them know have a little meeting with them and just kind of check it out you never know yeah yeah and i can arrange those types of meetings for sure oh and, wonderful yeah, yeah. Be great yeah well there you go does anybody have anything else I really loved getting to know about this forestry museum. It, again, I was searching for Cass County sawmills and boom, there was the <laughs> Texas Forestry Museum. I was like, what's this? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I uh, kind of got another little question, kind of a personal question, Caitlin. Yeah. I looked over the list and, and I don't know where you got that listing of sawmills, Carolyn. I, I mean, it's you, on you had it. website. Okay, mm -hmm. but I did not see White Walker in, in that list, and I it was, a, and it was a, a from what we've been told. Now mm -hmm. you know it's been a long, long time, but from what we've been told, it was a significant sawmill in Bivens, Texas, just south of Atlanta. And so I wonder about that, and I wonder if it was a lot smaller than we had been led to believe, or or just why it wouldn't be listed why it wasn't listed um so the database was created it was created by a um i don't know if he was a doctorate student at this point or a graduate uh, student at this point but um it was created by a person who worked for the museum it was before i was here and so i'm not sure if he was able to just um put the information that he had found and researched and found here at the museum, or if it was through word of mouth of how he knew which ones to put onto the database itself. Mm -hmm. But yes, there are some that we've heard um, that have been on there that may have been like um, longer around than the others, or it's also where we're missing some just due to the fact uh -huh. that um, it kind of depended, I think, on what he was. I'm not sure how he was dictating who was on there or not, whether it was through word of mouth or if it was just what he could find at that time. I see. I see. So, okay. All right. Yeah. But we need some facts and some docs there, even photocopies, Danny, for, mm -hmm. for well, I've, maybe. I've never seen I've never seen any anything written. I've never seen any type About of pictorial or, or anything else. I mm -hmm. just know that uh uh it my father-in-law lost his dad as i said in that accident and uh, yeah. and he was eight eight years old at the time and 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 uh 
and seven or eight. Yeah. And, uh, and of course my father-in-law passed away now, but he would have been 94 as well. He and my dad were the same age. And so that a long, long time ago. And, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, I have a personal interest in it and so right. just, just, uh, would wondering about the question. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, that'd be great. If, um, yeah, that's always one of those things is that, um, there's a lot of, we know there were a ton of sawmills um, during the late 1800s, early 1930s around. Um, it's just trying to get that information, um, found, find it, whether it's through documentation, through newspapers or even letters or, um, but yeah, you're right. If there's been a sawmill, you would think that there would be some kind of record so. that you could yeah. look for it to <laughs> be able to detail, like if it was a larger sawmill or if it, mm -hmm. yeah, and what they made there and stuff. Yeah. You know, Caitlin, as the uh, fall winds down, do you have any big events going on this holiday that you could tell us about in case people want to wander over there to Lufkin? Yeah, sure. Uh, we do have one um, big one. It's our Santa Claus Express. We hold it every year um, that I've been here so far. Um, not always at the museum, but now it is at the museum. And it's where we um, have focus that Santa's in the train depot and parents can bring their kids and take pictures with Santa. And then we also have story time in our caboose. And then we'll also have holiday games and stuff. So it's um, we try to focus it where it's more around and centered around being at like on the train with Santa or being with Santa near the train. But it's one of those big events that we enjoy having. It is a ticketed event. So um, it's $5 per person, but uh, we do have free things during the winter break season as well. So like for families, when they have are out of school, the children, you can always bring them down. We'll have a craft in our um, classroom that's free. And then we also will have a sawmill it's a board game and I'm pretty sure we're going to do our sawmill town board game again this year. We haven't hundred percent decided on that, but it's where it's in the sawmill um, history wing and you have a dice and you um, basically, it's like a life-size board game that you're going to station to station and going through a day in the life of the sawmill employee or person who lives in the sawmill. Is the Santa train event? It's, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. It's December 8th. It's from six to eight. It's not this Friday, but next Friday. I <laughs> also want to send okay. kudos to the gift shop um, coordinator. I've been a follow. I started following Texas Forestry Museum on Facebook. And we're like, look at that cute ornament. Look, I've been yeah. noticing they're really doing a good job. There's you must you have a gift shop in Edwards. Yes, <laughs> we do have a gift shop, and so yeah, I will tell Stephanie. She's our museum coordinator. She's um over the gift shop, and so she's been doing the posts about like what we have in there for Christmas holiday shopping. <laughs> Good job, because I I like go zooming through Facebook, but I actually stopped and looked at those. I was like, that is so great. <laughs> and what is the website, Caitlin? Yeah, it's going to be www.treetexas.com, and Texas is spelled out. And that'll take you to the homepage, and then there will be several tabs at the top. Um, for field trips and stuff, you just go to education. For the sawmill database, it should be under our research tab. Um, we have an events calendar where it'll tell you our events. Um, of course, we're coming to the end of the year. I haven't uploaded the events for 2024 yet, but um, that'll happen. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time today. It was really fun to get to know what's going on over there. Very well, curious. <laughs> I appreciate you inviting me. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, can I, get, uh, I think we're following you on our Atlanta Grade School Friends Facebook page. If you ever have anything you want us to share, just <laughs> let us know. Okay. Yeah. Know and, and anyone. Do you do you get the monthly newsletter? Because I I personally have not, so I don't know. Um, do I need to sign up with my email for? Or? Well, it, it would be. Uh, I mean, even I can this, sign you up if you want. Like. This, uh, this this Santa Express type deal on. Uh, I get that it, we should have put it out in November, but even a, an announcement like that would be something appropriate for us to. That you could mention. do. Okay. Yeah. yeah, or the calendar once you launch the calendar for next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We could say, hey, check it out. Actually, you know, I'll. Uh, edit the recording from today and put it mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel. And then I normally attach that to the to a 
MailChimp, you know, our newsletter. So people can go right over there and look at and look at it. And uh, so I could, that would be great information to add to that. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, just just email me anytime. I'm, I'm okay. there a lot. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We appreciate your time. Oh, no problem.